Welcome to this week's Simon. I'm Jacques. And I'm Swati of the Scientific Affairs team here at Illumina. Well, you can see the leaves are changing again and the flu season is, is upon us. Oh, I hate flu. You know, <laughs> I, I honestly thought they'd have a cure for it by now. Yeah, funny you should say that. Um, do you, did you see the paper by Zhao et al? They report that honeysuckle extract can target the influenza virus. Uh, isn't honeysuckle tea already a well-known traditional medicine? I mean, I think it's mentioned in the Shenong's Herbal Classic about 1800 years ago. That's totally true, but this paper is different. The authors identified the active ingredient as a microRNA that targets the influenza A viruses. A uh, microRNA? I mean, plants do produce microRNAs, but are they stable enough to survive extraction and boiling? Yeah, interesting you should say that because the, um, they actually use the Illumina sequencing to test the stability of microRNAs during the boiling process. And only the MIR2911 survived. And it made up about 70% of the reads. And I should add that it's also RNA is resistant. That's just amazing. I mean, does it have an unusual RNA sequence? Like, is it GC rich or something? You know, that's a really good guess. Uh, when they uh, created GC-less rich mutants, it lost its stability completely. I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense. Um, but I know in, in Chinese medicine, honeysuckle is used for lung ailments, so. Yeah, uh, that's, that's exactly right. When mice consume the extract, the microRNAs accumulated in their lungs and, and in the liver. Exactly what you would expect. So the most important observation, though, is, is that they could show that the plant MIR2911 directly binds to some types of influenza A viruses and inhibits swine flu H1N1 viral replication in vitro. And, you know, if it's so GC-rich, how could they be so sure that the binding was specific? Um, that's, that's a really good point. But they found that mutating the target sites on the viruses would abolish the binding as did co-transfection with anti-MIR2911 antagonists. Hmm. Well, you know, that is quite convincing. But, uh, you know, the real test of it is, of course, if, to see if it can actually combat infection. I knew you would say that. <laughs> when, when they administer the MIR2911 to H1N1 infected mice, the viral titers were just significantly redu reduced. Hmm. And uh, they could also show that it significantly improved the survival of H5N1 infected mice. You know, it is very unusual to see a specific antiviral impact, you know, multiple types of viruses like the swine flu and the avian flu. Yes, the whole study is really quite unusual because it's the first time I've seen a screen for microRNAs in traditional medicine. It's, it is quite exciting. And, you know, it makes you wonder about the importance of nutritional components like microRNAs that you get from your food. You know, do we lose these components when food is highly processed? Yeah, you know, uh, but now that we know how to keep mice healthy, I hope they can find something for us humans. <laughs> I hope so, too. I'll have my fingers crossed. <laughs> you know, that is all we have for today. Please do feel free to reach out to us with any questions, comments, thoughts, concerns, or any feedback. We always love hearing from you. Take care and have a great day. Bye. Bye. See you later.